What is going on, everybody? Welcome back once again to another episode of a Stonewalls Perspective podcast. I am your host, Alexander Stone. In this episode, we have another very special guest with us. She is my age, 17 years old. She is a young conservative Christian cowgirl who loves God, guns, Second Amendment, Trump, and truth. Please welcome Savannah from The Savvy Truth. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you on this Actually, it's warm today. It's like 80 degrees. I don't know where you are, but it is not a Christmas day here. Well, I live in Missouri, and like a few days ago, it was like 72 degrees, and now it's like not. And so it's definitely weird here, but uh, I can't complain. God is good. He's blessed me with uh, a life, and I can serve him and follow him, and uh, it's amazing. So what we're going to be talking about today in this episode is really the generation that we are in, which is generation uh, Z, I I think I can't remember it because it doesn't really matter to me. All I know is our generation is stupid um, because we've just been indoctrinated with a bunch of nonsense from our schools, from everything that we're hearing from the left and the media. And Savvy has really gone against that uh, with her podcast. And she was, you were actually canceled, weren't you? You were taken off of Twitter and, and TikTok, weren't you? I've been taken off of almost every platform. The first platform that decided to derail me and cancel me was TikTok. And that was on my account. We were so close to reaching a million followers. And then one day I log on and your account has been permanently deleted. Wonder why. And then they say, oh, you have committed domestic terrorism and violated our community guidelines one too many times. Mm -hmm. So that was their reasoning. It's, it's definitely terrible. What, what's going on, you know, with the cancel culture. I, uh, I started a Vimeo account like a month ago to for more podcast platforms. I put my podcast on there and within five minutes, they banned me because of conspiracy theories. Uh, when I was talking about the gospel, I was talking about Jesus. Uh, so it, it's, it's definitely madness. Uh, so we're just going to be talking about kind of our youth and everything. But before we do that and get into depth, uh, can you just give us a little bit about who you are, where you come from, uh, your faith, your upbringing, kind of that? that rundown of, of things so i'm a military brat i've been my entire life and i was raised in a conservative christian family and what shaped everything that i believe in was when i was little me and my little brother after church on sunday my dad and my mom would take us to dairy queen and we would go over the preamble to the constitution the amendments and we would study them and we would learn about our government and about economics and about the three branches and checks and balances. And I think that is where I got my love of politics. But when I got to a certain age around like middle school, my parents sat me down and they're like, all right, it's time for you to decide what you believe in. And I just took my Bible and my constitution and I looked around me and I just decided what party, what group, what people lines up with my Bible and my constitution. And it was pretty obvious at the time which party did. That, that's definitely amazing. Just seeing, seeing that, how you really looked at what you saw, what you have been taught to believe in, and you looked at both parties and really made your choice. This is what I'm going to go with. And it, it seems as if our generation especially will learn things and just stick with them uh no matter what it is you know and and that that's definitely a problem that i think that many of us face and so so my question to you is what do we do about that because it seems like many people aren't doing anything they're not standing up they're not speaking out for the truth both about the gospel and the truth about the constitution what that is what that entails Uh, especially in the 21st century? Well, we live in a generation that is solely focused on their screens, on political correctness, and on being social justice warriors. And it's hard to break out of that shell because of many different factors. The biggest thing, I think, being public school curriculums. For some reason, we as a society have decided that our entire new uprising generation learns the same way, thinks the same way, takes tests the same way, and should all learn the exact same thing. When in reality, what creates a diverse, unique, and 
cultural society are people being raised with different beliefs, people who are being taught different things. Not everyone needs to go to college. Not everyone wants to go do trade, but it takes many different people to make the world go around. And for some reason, our generation has decided that we all need to either play the exact same game by the exact same rules and have the exact same characters, or for some reason we get kicked off like we're some scum or terrorist or like we get called all the time domestic terrorists because we have the audacity to look outside of this matrix that we live in and try to find something that resembles any form of truth because we have been lied to on more than one platform. You know, that's exactly right. The, the word of God speaks to this very, very clearly that the truth will set us free. And we're living in a day and an age where the truth is being censored. It's being shut down. It's being taken off ever, everywhere. And we have a problem that we can't find the truth, but we do have one source of truth that is firm. It's still, and there's nothing that can cancel it or take it down. And it's the word of God. And there are many people who are our age who don't believe in the word of God. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in that Jesus existed. And something that we need to do as Christians, as, as young people who believe in, in the Bible and in this conservative movement is stand up and speak out about this. I've been talking about this for since 2020 uh, when, when, when COVID hit. I was like, okay, we need to get in. We need to buckle up and be unashamed of the gospel. Like it says in Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for the Jew first and also for the Greek. And the problem right now is we have people who will say that they're Christians and that they'll say that they have conservative ideologies, but they're silent about it. I'm so tired of people saying they're the silent majority, silent majority, silent majority. I'm tired of silent majority because a silent majority means nothing to me because you're not doing anything. We need to stand up and speak out for what we believe in. And, and, and so it takes courage, but we, we need to do it. And, and you've done a great job at that. Well, thank you. I, I really do try to base off my entire life, all of my convictions, all of my beliefs, my principles, my values off of the Bible, because the truth is not relative. The truth doesn't invalidate points that are legitimate. The truth has been and will forever be the truth and nothing can change that. And I'm not talking about your truth or my truth. I'm talking about God's truth. And he calls us to be the salt of the world, to be a light in a dark room. But he also tells us if that salt loses its saltiness, it will be thrown under the cattle and trampled on. So again, what, what you said, silent majority, dumbest thing I've ever heard in the world. No one who was silent and quiet and watched as evil prevailed succeeded or did anything good. In fact, we see so many times, especially with World War II, because I will forever say, history does not repeat itself, the human condition does. And there's that poem from World War II. First they came for the socialist, but I was not a socialist, so I stayed quiet. And then they came for the capitalist, but I was not a capitalist, so I stayed quiet. And then they came for the Jews, but I was not a Jew, so I stayed quiet. But then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. At some point, we have to decide when's enough enough. I mean, America was founded because a bunch of 17 year olds with guns didn't want to pay three cent T tax. And if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what will. Because we have a president in office right now that has literally said, what's the matter with giving away your freedoms? It's no big deal. Come on, man. And if that doesn't bring up a million and one red flags, I don't know what will. You know, you're exactly right. And, and, and I've, had the opportunity to grow up going to a Christian home for part of that time I was homeschooled and and I learned facts you're homeschooled you learn facts we learn things that are factual about our the history of our country and the word of God and, and like you just said it, it was a bunch of 17 year olds with guns who didn't want to pay a three cent tea tax and if it weren't for them we wouldn't have this nation that we have right now I remember back in Thanksgiving Black Lives Matter tweeted this that were, that were uh, eating stale turkey on, uh, on stolen land. Um, and, and I was just like, what are you talking about? This is really not anything to do with our history. This is the fact that they don't really care about our history, why we are here. And the reason why we're here is because we value freedom. Our founding fathers valued freedom 
And when people are trying to take that away from us, like we, like that's been happening for the past two years, then th there's a big problem. There's a big deal, Mr. Biden, uh, with, with that. And we need to stand against that. We, there is only a small remnant of people in, in the line standing against it. And I think there needs to be way, way more than there already are. And, and this whole silent majority thing is, is the stupidest thing ever. Uh, I like how you mentioned Matthew 5, 13 through 16, that, that the salt will be, will be trampled on. It, it's good for nothing. And that's a lot of people in this movement today. A lot of people who claim to be Christians, a lot of people who claim to be conservatives, they're good for nothing because they're doing nothing. And so we need an action plan and uh, steps of action. My friend Heidi St. John, who's been on my podcast and I've been on her podcast, uh, she says this all the time. It's time to get off of the bench and onto the battlefield. There's a battlefield and, and there's a spiritual war that is going on within the United States of America right now. And it's time to put on our armor. It's time to buck up. It's time to buckle our seats up and it's time to get in action. And so, so how, what, what, what steps can we take to, to take action? Well, first of all, I would have to say, get off your ass, pardon my French, but goodness, I'm sick and tired of seeing generations before me sit on their Facebook and complain about how this country is going to rubbish. Guess what? This is your fault. You gave the enemy an inch on things you didn't think would matter, and they end up running a hundred miles with it. For some reason, we as a society have become above war, above fighting for freedom. Guess what? Freedom isn't free and freedom has a blood red stain on it because everywhere that where there is a good man who is fighting for the justice and for the unborn or for just life and human humanity, there is an evil man trying to harm that, extinguish that, get rid of that. Because guess what? The devil has dominion on earth. He has free reign of all of our souls right now. And quite frankly, we are giving in to him. We are giving up. We are forgetting our, about our creator who has already won the final battle. And for some reason, we're bowing down to the snake who eventually is going to get his head trampled on him by the heel of Jesus Christ. And quite frankly, you want to talk about being on the right side of history? Maybe you should decide about being on the right side of God and the Satan devil himself before we start worrying about cancel culture and political correctness. Because let me just say, when you go meet Jesus one day and he's making sure your name is written in the book of life, he's not gonna go check to see if you posted a black square on Instagram or if you use the correct terms to describe the alphabet people. <laughs> I couldn't have said that any better myself. You know, I like how you mentioned uh, how they've taken one inch and, and gone a hundred miles with it. I, I don't remember who it was who said this, but I, I think it was um, it was on Joe Rogan's podcast and the, the guest on there, I think it was Jordan Peterson. He said, if I were the liberals, I would be doing exactly what they're doing right now, which, which is taking one inch and, and, and we're like, oh no, oh, oh, please go away. And so we step back for a while then they take another inch and that goes on over and over and over again until we've gotten to this point where they're mandating masks they're mandating vaccines. They are in, in other countries, they are implanting chips, which, which that looks to be the mark of the beast here soon. That's an issue. It's because we haven't stood up. We haven't fought for, for what we believe in. We haven't fought for the constitutional values. We haven't fought for, for, for liberty and freedom, like it says all over the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and, and all of our founding documents. That's an issue, and it needs to be dealt with very, very quick, or we're going to lose this republic. And, and, and even worse, many people will lose their souls. The Bible says this very clearly in, in the book of Matthew, that there are either two things that you're going to hear when you are before God, get out of my sight, I never knew you, or come into my kingdom, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear that first thing. I don't want that for any, anybody. I don't want anybody to hear that first thing. That's the scariest thing you'll ever hear ever because it means you'll be separated from God for eternity. And so our youth need to, need to really just pay attention to what's going on. 
um, and, and not only our youth, just everybody, because everybody is being deceived. And the way that we get out of this deception, the, the great deception that there, we are in is through the word of God, through the words of Jesus. You know, Clay Clark says this all the time, that we don't need a red wave of Republicans. We need a red wave of the blood of Jesus. And when that happens, man, it changes everything about everything about everything. It changed my personal life and it changed the Apostle Paul life, life who, who murdered Christians. He fed them to lions. And then he became the greatest Christian of all time. It changes everything about everything. We need Jesus more than anything else in this nation. And Christians aren't standing up for him. Well, Christians are too worried about offending people to do anything. I'm really sick and tired of seeing the church bow down to the mob, the squad, the elites, and the social justice warriors because they're trying to get people to come into their church, but they don't want to offend them at the same time with conviction. Guess what, Church of Christ? People aren't going to come into our church if you do not tell them the truth. And you know what I have to say? There are going to be a lot of people who no matter what you do, they're still going to reject you. I've had to encounter my fair share, but I've also had to remind myself that it is not my job to save every soul I come across. All I can do is plant a seed of the Bible in their hearts. And if it takes root, thank God. But if it doesn't, I have to let God do his work and let him move in their life. But if we keep worrying about offending everyone through pronouns or not wanting to call out blatant sin when we see it, we're just as bad as the rest of them. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be the light of the world. God set us apart to be his chosen people, to bring his word and his news of his son to the world. And quite frankly, we're doing a pretty crappy job about it these days. So I'm going to tell every Christian out there, to heck with offending people. Go spread the word of Jesus. If they get offended by the Bible, it's probably because your Holy Spirit irritates their demons. <laughs> that's exactly right my favorite book of the bible uh, is philippians philippians 121 for me to live as christ and to die is gain and i think that every person should apply that to their lives if they proclaim to be christians that they live every single second of their life for christ and to die it'll all be for gain because they'll be with christ philippians 127 only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of christ so that whether i come and see you or am absent I may hear of your affairs and that you stand fast in spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. It seems as if 21st Christianity has not been uh, worthy of the gospel whatsoever because we're not sharing the gospel at all. Uh, Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or, or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself, Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but the interests of others when we're not sharing the gospel folks we aren't looking out for the interests of others that's a problem the souls of men the souls of women are at stake because they don't know jesus they don't know the saving power the saving grace of jesus and we need to stand for that that that's our calling as christians like like savia said multiple times in, in matthew five thirteen, we are the salt we are the light of the world be that. Don't hide your light. Don't cover your light. Don't become flavorless salt. Rather, take the gifts that God has given you. Take what, what we have been called to and apply that to our lives. I was recording a podcast just earlier with my friend, Pastor Philip Smith, and we were talking about walking in faith. Sometimes it's going to be difficult to go and do these things. You don't have to be on stage like Savvy is or doing a podcast like we are. Go to your neighbor, go to your friend at school, go to, go to your coworker and ask them, hey, do you know Jesus? If not, share that with them. If, if they do, then encourage them in their faith. Man, but we need to be unashamed of the gospel because when we're unashamed, we're living out what God has called us to, which is to proclaim his name, his fame, his glory from the rooftops. You know what? Too many times I see people saying, you know, I, I just don't have what it takes. I don't have the requirements. And I'm just here to tell you this. God doesn't call those who have everything perfectly lined up with all their ducks in a row. 
He gives you the talents and the things that you need to get the job done for what he called you to do. At times, it's going to seem like, guess what? The wind is howling, it's dark at night, it's freezing, it's cold, and you have no idea where you're going. But guess what? He does. He's got a plan. There is a light at the end of this tunnel. And for, quite frankly, that light is heaven. And right now, we're in this limbo of just in between what we know happened in the Bible and what we know is going to happen in the end. And it's up to us to write the story that's going to happen in the meantime. And guess what? I don't want this story to be a negative one. I don't want this story to be a loss of battle because it is going to take a lot more than just posting a Bible verse on your Instagram and saying, I'll pray for you. Guess what? We got to put some actions to these words. Even God says that we have to do both. It takes so much to get this world straight again. And you know what? Sad to say this, but this is reality. We will never make this world perfect. We will never cleanse it of evil. That is not for us to do, but that is for God. That is for him to do on judgment day, not ours. But what we are supposed to do is to save as many people as possible, to tell as many people about the good news of Jesus Christ. Because guess what? At the end of the day, politics doesn't matter. If you're conservative or liberal, it does not matter. I know it might feel like it does, but at the end, it's all about whose name is written in the book of life, because I cannot tell you how much it pains my heart to know that there are people I know and I've met that will not see heaven, because they, how many times, pester them with Jesus, how many times I want to invite them to church, how many times I bestow them a Bible, or I give them a note with a little verse written on them. There's only so much we can all do. You just have to plant the seed. You can't force people into heaven. All you can do is plant that seed of the Bible. That's all we are called to do, plant seeds. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Ephesians chapter five says, therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk as love in love as Christ loved and uh, us and given himself for us in offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma the church needs to start being imitators as god once again because the church has been filled with wolves in sheep's clothing preaching false gospels uh preaching um false ideologies and when we believe that we are not imitating christ we need to imitate christ in in the way that we walk the way that we talk the way that we act and also the way that our doctrine is if your doctrine allows for there to be sin then your doctrine is wrong and you have a false God, you have a false Jesus. And so we need to start studying scripture, studying the words of Jesus, the words that are in red everywhere, all, all of the word of God, and start proclaiming his name and his fame and his glory for the rest of your life, because that is what our mission is. My, my, my The podcast motto that I have is to spread the light of the gospel into every aspect of life. And that's what needs to happen. That's, that's exactly what needs to happen. And we need more people like you, like me, uh, to do that. Um, and, and there's not. I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot more very, very soon. I have seen it in TikTok and to name one thing. But yeah. there is a generation of people, not just one generation, but everyone who is searching for an answer for some form of hope and they're finding it in their creator there is no better place to feel safe to find your hope to find purpose and to figure out who you are and what you're doing in this ginormous universe that we live in and when you're surrounded by so much evil and so much darkness in this world it's easy to feel lost and misguided but it also makes it really really easy to see that little light in the far off distance and to know that that's probably something that you should be working towards, walking towards, running full on sprinting. But when you finally do get to that light and you realize who and what it is and what they did for you and who died on the cross for your sins, I can't describe it as anything other than just blisterous joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, we, need, we need to have that blisterous joy about what Jesus has done for us that that he has saved us from our sin from our shame from our blame that we don't have to be condemned to hell for the rest of eternity rather we can be drawn unto god for eternity that we can be with him uh for the rest of our lives after we die uh 
that's beautiful. And that's, that's something that I can't even begin to fathom, even in studying scripture. But I, I do know one thing that the glory of God is so much better than a lack of glory of God. And that's exactly what hell is. It is the, the lack of the presence of God and so much worse. That's the biggest judgment that you can have being, being separated from Christ for eternity, but you don't have to be, you can be separated unto Christ for eternity. If you put your faith that in him, that he did come as a, as a baby born of a virgin lived a perfect life and then rose again uh, after he died the third day that he rose again. Um, and that's, that's the biggest truth that we could ever preach that we could ever share at the end of the day, like you said, politics don't matter. It doesn't matter if you are a conservative or not. The only thing that matters is if you do know Jesus. And if you don't, then you need to know him. You know, you just, you just got to listen to the Bible. It's the roadmap for life. I truly believe that for every problem that we will ever face, God has some scripture in the Bible that tells you exactly how to handle the situation with me thing called the savvy truth i always 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 end all of my shows with the good book of john 8 32 says know the truth and the truth shall set you free and that's such a little verse that commonly just gets missed and skipped over but i think that there's so much more to that because when you are in a ignorance i mean people do say it's bliss and to some degree yeah it is. It is nice to not know about all the sex trafficking that goes on to girls who are 8, 13 years old. It's nice to not know about all the arsonists and rapists who are running free. It's nice to know that there are serial killers out there who never face trial because they got away with it. It's nice to not know about all of the terrorists who behead Christians daily in foreign third world countries. But guess what? We do need to know about these things because if we don't know about it, how are we supposed to fix it? And when you do figure out what the truth is and you find it and it's not your truth, it's not his truth, it's not her truth, it's the truth, it truly is freeing to know that you're not being lied to anymore. That's exactly right. The truth does set us free and that's exactly what we need. I've grown up in church my whole life and I've heard this all the time and it's super cheesy, but it's really, really true. The Bible, people say this all the time, that the Bible stands for the best instructions before leaving earth. And that is exactly right. It is the best instructions before leaving earth. And we need to look on it and believe in what the word of God says before we leave earth. And if we don't, then that's punishment forever. But like you just said in the book of uh, John, it says that the truth will set you free. And we need that every single second of every of every day of our lives. Well, you know what? I am proud to say that if I die right now, I know exactly where I'm going. Much to the dismay of every single hate comment that says I'm going to hell because I had the audacity to say that there are two genders and that men can't have babies. But I digress. If I die, I know where I'm going. And quite frankly, these days, I look forward to it. But then I have to remind myself I have a job to do here on earth. I have a purpose here. It's not my time yet. And when God calls me home, I will go happily. But in the meantime, I got horses to take care of. I got people to tell about Jesus. I got liberals to piss off because I had this crazy idea that maybe we should stick to the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence when interpreting the law of the land. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's savvy, savvy truth. Uh, thank you so much for being on this episode. I couldn't have worded that any better myself. Uh, it was truly an honor to have you on. Uh, thank you all for listening. God bless you all and goodbye. I called General Flynn. I said, General Flynn, I feel like God wants us to team up to do a reopen America tour and we get people back to God. And he says, I know. I'm going, you know? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. I wasn't thinking of the Bill of Rights when we did this. I believe America is supposed to be that shining city on the hill, the beacon of freedom. But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You gotta make sure you cover your whole thing. These vaccines are zero liability. There's so much fake information. It's the David and Goliath thing. Their agenda is not God's agenda. Why will the churches not stand up? I'm trying to save America. 
I believe we're in the greatest revival in history. So the people have been wanting me to give a tour of my office, where I do my podcast, everything there. And so my brother, Zachary, he's holding my phone right now, taking this video. And so come on, Zachary, we're going to show them where my podcast studio is, kind of where I do what I do. First of all, I'm going to ask that you ignore that. This is where my siblings play video games when I'm not doing my, my thing, which is podcasting and, and business stuff. Uh, so ignore that. We have soundproofing right there. Uh, come over here. We have we have this. I have no idea why we have this, but it's there, okay? And so we also have books. As you can see, we have a whole library of books. Uh, we have the USS Enterprise uh, from the show Star Trek. It's a wonderful show. Zachary, do you like Star Trek? No. Why do you not like Star Trek? Star Wars is better. That is not an answer. Star <laughs> Trek and Star Wars are both great, um, and... And all of my listeners can say, can quote me on that. We have ASU Sun Devils. My dad was from Arizona. And so this is a nice little thing. Um, Deep State, probably, but I don't care. Let's back, back up. Thank you. So we have more books over here. All of these are kind of fic, uh, fiction. All of this is nonfiction over here. Some of it is Deep State. Some of it is not. Someone who is not Deep State is Nick Vujicic. I think that's how you say his name. He's called the Limbless Preacher because he has no limbs. I have no idea how he wrote this book, but he did. And so he endorsed Dr. Mark Sherwood for governor. Uh, he loves Jesus. He loves our country. And so I'm happy with that. Right here, right here, um, my uncle paints. And so here's a painting of his. And if you want Deep State, uh, not Deep State paintings, uh, then reach out to me and I'll reach out to him, see if he can make you a painting because uh, he's good at painting. Show that th to them again. Isn't that great? Yes, it is great. So next on, we have where I do my thing. This is where I do my thing. And so I have a camera, I have lighting. Uh, it turns on like that. I have a MAGA hat. You can't go wrong with the Make America Great Again hat with the American flag on the side. Isn't that great? Uh, I have my microphone. I love this microphone. It's super easy to use and everything. Uh, I have my iPad. I have my laptop under these books. And so these books, these are great books that I use. Uh, the Believer's Authority by Kenneth E. Hagan. A uh, great book. It teaches you uh, how to walk and live in the authority that God has given you over the devil. And then the Boom Book my, by my friend Clay Clark. And if you've listened to Clay Clark, he is one of the greatest men you'll ever listen to. He's so smart, such a genius. And so he put his genius into this book, How to Grow Your Business, How to Grow Your Thing. And so then finally, I have my Bible. This is the Word of God. This is where we get the revelation from God. And so uh, this is a great thing as well. And that's kind of how my podcast started through, through the Word of God. So let's open to a random chapter. Uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. The reason why I do this podcast is because I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for the listener because I want to show you and teach you how to walk in a godly way, in a godly fashion, without supporting the deep state. And so what we do is we read the Word of God, the King James Version, the New King James Version, um, New American Standard Bible is where I read the Word of God. Over here, uh, we have my business cards. Point the camera at my business cards. We have a lot of them. See them? See them? There's a lot. Okay, so I need to give those out more frequently. Uh, I have my handy-dandy pocket knife that I almost never use, but I have it because uh, the Second Amendment exists, and yeah, um, let's see, we have podcast arms, um, I don't know why I have so many podcast arms, but I do, and so that's about it, so if you want to, oh, oh, I forgot, here's this, defund the swamp and refund the kingdom, if you want to defund the swamp and refund the kingdom, go to mypillow.com, and you can use the promo code STONEWALL, 
to get up to 66% off your order. That's promo code STONEWALL. I have a couple governor coins here. Uh, the first interview that I did with the governor of Missouri, he gave me this with the with the back, the black back. And then the second one that he gave me was the bicentennial with the white back. And so that was a cool thing. And uh, and that's about it for my office. That's about it for where I do what I do. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching this episode. God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.